Hey, Lauren, thanks for taking out the time today and join us on the podcast. Hey, Peter, how's it going? It's going good. It's going good. Thank you so much. Uh, I know it's been a little bit since we first connected and chatted about you coming on the podcast. So, so I was doing a little research and, and before we get into, you know, what you're currently doing today, if you can give our listeners a little background on, you know, where you started in real estate and really what led up to where you're at today. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, my name is Lauren Hardy. For those who don't know me, um, which I'm sure none of you guys do, um, I live in Orange County, California, and I'm a real estate investor. And my specialty or my unique niche is that I invest in properties that are out of state. And the reason I do that is because I had to. California's investment market got really saturated for me. Um, the returns on the deals that I was doing was getting less and less over the years. And I realized that if I wanted to keep making money in this business, I needed to go out of state. Um, so I started about nine years ago. I was um, flipping homes. I started flipping houses. It was kind of a side hustle. I was working in corporate real estate at the time. I was actually working for the Irvine company, funny enough. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and on the side, I was flipping homes. Um, my first year, I did a couple house flips with my brother. He's the one who taught me the industry. And after the first year, I had saved up enough money to quit my full-time job. And I was just professionally house flipping um, from that point forward. And I was doing a little bit of wholesaling as well. So I would wholesale the stuff I didn't want and flip the stuff I did want. Um, it was great. It was a great model. Um, about 2016 is where I noticed that it was really getting tough to get deals. So all the things that I was doing to get these house flip projects, it was taking more work <laughs> and more marketing dollars to get the same deal. And then these deals were not as profitable. Yeah. So I was working, you know, way harder, making less money, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. No. So I was, you know, I looked around and I have a lot of friends in the business and they're, you know, all over the country and they weren't dealing with it as bad as I was. And that really motivated me to go to another market, especially because I wanted to buy rentals. I knew at one point I wanted to have passive income, but I knew that California, the way prices were going with homes, it didn't really make financial sense to have and hold rentals in California unless you bought them many, many years ago. Yeah. Um, so going virtual was the choice I made. It's not for everybody, but it was the choice that I made. And it's um, one of the best decisions I made for myself. Yeah. Uh, so before we get into, you know, what you're doing virtually, why don't we go back to, you know, how you were getting your first deals and how you kind of started out with working with your brother and, mm -hmm. and doing those first couple of deals. Yeah. So I didn't know anything about house flipping. I never aspired to be a house flipper. I never watched those TV shows, um, but I really hated my job. Yeah. So I would have been willing to do anything. Um, I, had my daughter, she was only one years old and I had a baby on the way. I just found out I was pregnant. So I was really motivated to get getting out of that corporate nine to five because daycare, especially in our area, California is so expensive. Yeah. So I really would have been willing to do anything. My brother just so happened that he started house flipping and he said, you know, you should check this out. It, it You might be able to do this on the side, like while you have the kids around and you know, you might not even have to do that many deals to make enough money to replace your income. So why don't you look into this? Especially so, out here. Yeah, especially out here, right? He's yeah. like, you just have to do like one. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'll be fine. So um, he got a hold of a, a course. And this is back in the day when education did not come on these online portals. They came in like CDs. Oh, so yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like this binder, like full of CDs. And I listened, I popped a CD every day in the car and on my morning commute, I would listen. Um, and that's how I learned like the nuts and bolts of house flipping and how to get these deals and like what to offer, um, how to do the accounting for it to make sure you're going to make money. Um, so I learned everything, you know, out of, out of this course. And then when I was ready to like start 
seller marketing, what the course taught was direct mail. Now, this is a long, this is nine years ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like direct mail was like this, this thing that not that many people were doing. Back yeah. Then. And, um, so the course taught direct mail. So that was my first marketing channel. Um, I sent out these letters. Um, it was so like, now that I look back, just very, you know, funny how I put it all together. I had gotten someone on Craigslist to hand write on the envelopes and I would buy the stamps. I would buy forever stamps, the Disney Pixar ones. Cause I thought they stood out. Oh yeah. And, I, and she would put those stamps on it. So it was very personalized direct mail message. And I just marketed to absentee owners and I had no real sophisticated approach to it. I would just kind of pick a city. Yeah. And, um, I think at the time I was really afraid of doing an actual single family home. So I was picking condos. Okay. So I was doing condos at first, like, and I think my first, in my first couple of deals were in Laguna Niguel and Laguna Hills. Okay. Yeah. 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 So nice. that was it. They were super, you know, straightforward flip projects. And, you know, I made enough money to be able to quit my full-time job, which was ideal, you know? Yeah. And from there, it just kind of grew, you know, every year I try to push myself to do more deals. Um, I think by the time I had left California, I was probably doing a consistent 10 to 15 deals a year here. Okay. Um, but some of those were, were wholesale deals. And I mean, those wholesales were nice. I mean, they yeah. were, they were big wholesales. Um, but I was keeping myself pretty busy, but what was happening was like, it was, they were making less and less money. I was just seeing the returns. I was hearing the seller conversations. The sellers were saying, Oh, well, I have an offer for this. And they yeah. were serious. They weren't like BSing me. Like people were offering so aggressively, Yeah, you know, it used to be like, Oh, I need a, ca a cash on cash return of like 15%. And then yeah. it was like, okay, 12 okay, 10, okay, eight, okay, you know what, I'll just do this project because may maybe I'll make money and let's cross my fingers. You yeah, know? yeah, let's go for 5%. Yeah, I, no, yeah. I know. And especially, I mean, you know, fast forward to today, I, yeah. you know, the market's crazy. So now it's like, you know, I've sat down with sellers where, you know, we were like, hey, we can offer you cash and we can do this, you know, for four. And this literally just happened. We can do this for 450 and then um, or you, sh you should list. And there was a comp right down the street on this four lane street, basically a highway yeah. uh, where this house was. And I said, hey, you know, you can or you can list for five. I gave them a price for 550. They listed ultimately with somebody else for 590 and they got 650 for it. So, wow. Yeah, you have no idea. You have no idea. It's just crazy. You can't even make sense of this market right now. Yeah. It's and it's it's unsettling. Um, so I mean, I'm happy to kind of have another option, yeah. you know, that I am out of state and I made that choice years ago. Um, and and who's to say I will I will be back here one day, you know, that it's cyclical and I think it'll get back to where there's um, you know, deals to be had in California. But until then, you know, I'm gonna work out of state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you were doing up until you left, and uh, so what year was it when you went virtual and you're doing wholesale virtually? Was that 2016? About 2016, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, I went to Nashville, Tennessee, and I started um, building houses because that was okay. the thing to do there. Okay. So yeah, I built homes there. Gotcha. All right. And then leading up to that, just before we leave, you know, your past life here doing stuff here in California, were you were you doing all direct marketer uh, marketing to mm -hmm. sellers through yes. uh, letters? Yeah, I mean, I was primarily all direct mail. Um, I did for a while. I was using uh, Craigslist. This okay. is there was a very brief window where you could get a deal on Craigslist yeah, until yeah, a bunch yeah. of people found out about it and it was gone. Yeah, that was gone. There was it was like a hot minute, <laughs> but. Yeah. It was mainly direct mail for, for that at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. And so what were you doing some training program that you went virtual from, you know, being in California to outside California, or was it just, you know, you didn't really hear much of it and you were like, you know what, I'm just going to try this on my own. I didn't even know virtual was a concept. I didn't even know virtual was the word virtual. Like yeah. it wasn't like that. It wasn't yeah. like, oh, I, I'm going to go virtual the way it's such a, you know, a word now. Um, no, I mean, there was no training that I could find on it. I think eventually I got myself one small, small course, but, um, but no, at the time I had no training. Um, I did not know what I was doing at all. 
Um, the only ba like the only background I had was that my dad owned property out of state. Um, he owned rentals when I was okay. growing up. And this one I was growing up um, in Ohio. It was because he was from Ohio. Yeah. So he put it together on his own, right? He just yeah. figured it out. And I, you know, kind of remembered what my dad did. He had a boots on ground. He had someone there. Um, so I kind of just put it together. Like I would sit and think and I go, okay, so how am I going to hold an inspection if I'm not there? Okay, well, I'll need a person. Okay, what can I call this person? I'm going to call him an errand runner because that's what they are. Yeah. How about a runner for short? So I started yeah. this term like runner. And then the runner is essentially me, you know, it's me, but it, yeah. it but it's someone I'm paying $20 an hour to be me. Yeah. So then I said, okay, well, but I want to save that $20 an hour. So how do I like do as much as possible over the phone so I don't have to pay $20 an hour to my runner? Well, there's DocuSign for signing contracts. Yeah. So, okay, how do I get a seller though to convince, to be convinced that like they can trust me all the way in California and to sign something on DocuSign, like how could a seller do that, right? Yeah. So I just got better with my script. You know, I got better at talking with sellers. Yeah. And I started learning their objections. They started, you know, it was the same questions that they'd have. And I just got better at putting them at ease and building rapport um, to where they would trust me enough to sign the contract. Um, and yeah, after a while, you know, you start learning things and building upon what you know. And then I think a really helpful thing was I started finding other virtual investors. So then I realized it wasn't just okay. me. So um, one guy, it was such a, like, this is the most like random first virtual person I met, a uh, virtual friend. I was at a coffee shop and I had my database pulled up and it was, po it's a podio system. Okay. Yeah. And this guy walked by and he goes, oh, my, my roommate uses that all the time. Are you a real estate investor? And I was like, yeah, you, you know, he's like, what? I was like, what's your roommate's name? And he's like, oh, you know, and so we like cherry did he, he like, I think I found his roommate on Facebook. Oh yeah. And I was like, he's like, and he's like, yeah, but my roommate does stuff in South Carolina. I was like, no kidding. Okay. Oh. I was like, all right. And so I reached out and I was like, Hey, like, this is so weird. I met your roommate at a coffee shop and we ended up like trading ideas. Like, so what are you doing? That's working for you. So what are you doing? That's working. And then I met another guy, um, another guy that went virtual and it was the opposite reason. He lived in a very like rural area of, yeah. um, West Virginia. Like, uh, you know, you could, like nobody like in the, yeah. in the mountains, like, yeah. you know, and so he was investing out of state, you know, cause they're like real estate had no value where he was. Yeah. So I met him, we would trade ideas, you know, then I met another guy, um, who actually was doing it at a higher level and I paid him to mentor me for a while. Okay. And then, you know, so I, I just, I was like, Hey, can I just pay you a thousand bucks and we'll talk on the phone for maybe an hour or two a month. Yeah. And that worked out. We did that for a year. And I, you know, now we ended up being really good friends. We're like still really good friends and I don't have to pay him to be my friend. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. You know, but that's, so that's, I put all that together, you know, and, um, you've just made it work. You know, if there's a will, there's a way you're going to make it work if you have to. Yeah. You're especially, you know, when you hate your job and then you move into real estate and real estate is all, you know, at that point, then it's yeah. okay. Well, you know, I burnt, you know, I burned my uh, boats. And so yeah. I'm going to go towards, you know, where I want to go, which is going to be real estate and wholesaling. And, and you already grasp that here. So you're able to mm -hmm. take the fundamentals and take it across, you know, state lines to another state, as long as you knew, you know, a little bit of the fundamentals out there, and then had some people that are, you know, boots on the ground, mm -hmm. then you could be successful. Was that person that was doing South Carolina, were they in uh, California? Is that how you mm -hmm. met them? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And do they yeah. still do some stuff? Do you still keep in contact with them too? I don't talk to him as much, but I do think he still does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I haven't, I've got, now I have so many virtual friends. So yeah, I don't, I feel like we haven't talked in a long time, but um, I do think he still does. And, you know, I wanted to comment um, the thing though, you know, you might think that it sounds like, oh gosh, like I have all this, you know, going against me, like being virtual. But one thing we do have going for us being from California, I'll tell you, we've got some competitive advantages. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, we are sharks. All right. We yeah. are like quick, go, go, go. Like we gotta be though. We gotta be we though. Have to be. Yeah. 
it's like, it's like, we have to be, we are competitive. Like we are like picking up the seller's phone call when the seller's ready. We are calling sellers back faster. I follow up with my competition faster than anybody in my market. I called them back. We call, we are like on our game because you have to in California. Yeah. Um, we're yeah, very yeah. quick. Um, so I think that mentality bringing that to markets where people are a little slower, like yeah. it's a slower paced life everywhere else. We don't realize that, but it, it, everywhere else is much slower or at least not everywhere, but we're yeah, the yeah. West Southern markets, stuff like that. Um, so there's that. The other thing is in California, we have a lot of money around us. Yeah. We have a lot of capital. We have a lot of investors. We have equity lines of credit in our homes. Yeah. You know, that you could buy homes, you know, in Oklahoma and, and build a rental portfolio with that. Yeah, that are massive. You know, that that, mm -hmm. you know, home equity line of credit could be, you know, huge comparatively if you have, you know, three homes over in Oklahoma or something like that. So you can utilize that here right. and, you know, easily start using that capital over in another state. So where are you at now? So you have you're doing wholesale virtually and, you know, you were focusing on Tennessee initially. Do you have multiple states now that you're in? Yeah. So we are definitely in and out of states from time to time too. Like we'll take some opportunities. Like if there seems to be an opportunity in a state for a while, we'll, we'll bounce in and out. Um, currently we are in four different markets okay. um, and they're all based uh, Midwest and one East coast market. Um, and we're growing, you know, and it, it's definitely exciting to be able to do that. I think the, the cool thing about being able to go virtual is when a market starts to not be as attractive, which does happen. Yeah. So markets all change. It, it's not just California guys, you know, yeah. that like that, Oh, it's too expensive here. I mean, that happened in Nashville. Nashville got too competitive. Yeah. Um, so I left Nashville, you know, and then there are, um, you know, reasons like certain markets, like if they're major metros, they get too saturated with people, you know, other investors. So it sometimes like I look at a market and go, you know, could I use this, these marketing dollars somewhere else and my yeah. fees be higher? And if that's the case, then I, I decide to, you know, invest in the other market. Um, so you know, now, I mean, it's, it's nice to be able to kind of pull in and out of markets, um, with all the experience that I have, it's a lot easier for me now. It wasn't that easy four years ago, yeah. but now I can pull in and out pretty quickly. Okay. And is, is all this, uh, wholesaling, are you usually doing Facebook ads, pay-per-click? Are you doing a little bit of both? Are you, you know, of pay-per-click versus mailing? Yeah, neither. Um, okay. I hate PPC. I okay. am big. I am like a very. I, I've never had success with it. I know there's I some people either. have. I know some people have. Listen, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but like whenever I've tried it, I don't know enough about it to be able to manage the person who's managing my campaign. I think that's really yeah. what it comes down to. Yeah. So um, I just do what I know. Um, so, you know, I still go direct to seller. I do, you know, mass texting. I do cold calling. Um, we do direct mail, okay. um, you know, so that's what we're currently doing to get our deals. And it's always changing. I think marketing, it's always going to change, you know, like too many yeah. people start texting, then you can't text anymore. And so, um, yeah, but that's what we're doing right now. Gotcha. Okay. And do you guys see, uh, I know that, you know, like you just said, everything changes. So you can have, you know, one day cold calling in a specific location is working great. And then, you know, the next couple of months, it's not working so well. So how quickly do you guys determine that? Is that like a 90 day where you do some research as you're in that market already where, Hey, cold calling is not working. So let's switch it to, you know, text messages and vice versa. Or are you doing all three or four different marketing tools and then, you know, taking I, one away? I would say more doing all of them and then okay. taking one away if it's like just an absolute junk, you yeah. know? Um, so like I would say direct mail, we slowed down quite a bit on that and got more strategic with it. Okay. Um, texting is, there's a lot of shifts in texting right now. industry yeah, wise. Sure. So, you know, we're, we're ready for it. You know, yeah. we know how we're going to pivot and you know, it's just about staying competitive and staying on top of what's going on. And some of that is not just like from our own research, although we do pull KPIs every single month, but some of it is just listening and making friends and hearing what your friends are saying too. 
You know? Yeah, because what I mean, I know some people. I know a wholesaler up in uh, the Central Valley that he uh, he stopped doing text messaging, you know, completely mm-hmm. just because you know there's a lot of regulations, or at least like mm-hmm. they've stopped a lot. You know, where you know, there's a bot where it'll stop, you know, text messages. Do you guys find that that's you know more prevalent now? Yeah, you have to be really on top of understanding how these platforms work to, yeah. to get your delivery. Yeah, for sure. Pain. Yeah, delivery has gone down a lot. So you have to be really strategic about how you send text messages and um, you have to really understand the software. Yeah. And so it's hard. Yeah. So you're being more specific about mailers and not doing, you know, mass mailer. How do you guys focus in on the copy and then also, you know, the individual or the seller that you're looking for? And how have you guys been able to critique that, you know, and write that copy versus, you know, blasting out 5,000? You know, it's funny. I, uh, the copy question uh, years ago, I was way more like obsessed with writing the right yeah. thing. And if I say this, will this make a difference? And if I bold these letters and if I use this color postcard versus that color postcard. And then I found out like it, no, none of that mattered. Yeah. Like none of it mattered. It was like j- just the basic message, you know, um, try to get out the most important points um, that are, you know, when you look at the seller list you're mailing to. Um, if you've pulled a certain type of distress seller, you know, avatar, yeah. you know, that you're speaking to them, you know, yeah, yeah. or if it's like an absentee owner who might have bad tenants, you're like, we'll take your property with tenants in place. First line, yeah, you know, stuff like that. So as long as it address the main points, um, I didn't find that copy really made that much of a difference. Yeah. I know there's some marketing experts that would probably like, you know. Yeah, they're probably totally different. Yeah. Totally different. <laughs> but, but I didn't really see much. Um, you know, what I more found was just consistency in the mailing and keeping your mailer the same so you were recognizable. Okay. Got it. And so working with the mailers and and you know, not really worried about the the copy when especially the last year, year and a half, we've had, you know, the moratorium. So have you gotten a seller that's called you and how have you combated that? And, you know, had that objection where it's, you know, Hey, I have a tenant in there. They haven't paid because of COVID. Um, you know, I know there's cash for keys. There's, you know, that's a good, you know, mm-hmm. good option. But a lot of people will say, you know, I've already tried that. Have you, yeah. have you been able to na- navigate that through? You know, what's going? crazy. And I'm in a, I'm a, primarily all my markets are landlord markets and we're, we're trading landlord deals. We're yeah. buying homes from landlords, selling them to new landlords and okay. hedge funds. And it has not come up nearly as much as I thought it would. Yeah. I mean, I can't even think of really like where it blew up a deal. Yeah. Like ever. And and that's where I'm like, how is that possible though? Because you're hearing all over the place that people are not paying their rent. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I, and I think, don't we all kind of feel this way about COVID data and what you're hearing yeah. on the news and what people are saying? Like nothing makes sense. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it doesn't I, make sense, but it, I didn't have to deal with it as much as I thought. Yeah, there's been, I mean, you know, I follow a lot of uh, bigger, you know, real estate Uh, companies that put out a lot of good data that, you know, they've had a lot of rent collections and the rent collections super high. So, you know, I, that's why I ask, I ask everybody that's definitely doing, you know, off market deals like yourself and doing wholesaling because, you know, I've, I've gotten calls from sellers and, you know, the, especially we're in California and that's, you know, my primary market. So I'll right. run into where there is an issue where it's like, yeah, this person hasn't been paying. Actually, we had that, you know, six, seven months ago where, you know, I had some, I had an off market, well, it was actually on market, but they were willing to sell for like 150 K below. And so, you know, the, the tenants were, hadn't been paying since COVID and, you know, no one really that I had won to, won to actually buy it. Mm. So, so, so that's why yeah. I asked. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, I anticipated it coming up way more than it did for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with, with where you're at now, are you doing any flipping outside of California or is it just all wholesale deals? I primarily wholesale right now um, okay. because the flips are very intense. They're very difficult to manage when you're out of state. Yeah. So, um, yeah, primarily wholesaling. Uh, but I also have a coaching program, so I'm pretty busy with that. Oh, yeah? So I don't even know how I can manage, like, flipping right now out of state. Yeah. What uh, coaching program? 
So I coach, uh, I coach with Wholesaling Inc. I don't know if you've heard of them. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. Okay. So Wholesaling Inc. Awesome. Uh, they've got an awesome podcast. Um, I host it uh, and I also coach virtual wholesaling and virtual real estate investing. So uh, my coaching program is uh, it's virtualinvestingmastery.com if you wanted to check it out. Okay. But we talk all things virtual. So I sum up all my hard lessons um, in one coaching program so you don't have to go through the learning curve that I had to go through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that brings up a next question. You know, when you're doing these, especially since you perfected it, has there been some things that have popped up, you know, recently or in the last year that has has been a little bit more challenging, you know, on a deal or making sure that, you know, you were able to, especially on price, right? Because price, mm -hmm. especially these days, a lot of people are like, you know, hey, this price is, you know, I just got an offer from somebody else for, you know, $20,000 more. So has, how have you been able to combat that, especially being outside of, you know, that state? And who are, who's negotiating those deals? Is it you? Is it, is it someone else on your team? Yeah, so it's it's my team. Um, we definitely have to make more offers to get that one deal. Um, but I would say that getting out of the major metros and marketing outside of the major metros has helped okay. because there's still, you know, like everybody wants to be kind of in those the the main the main metro or the main city, right? Like yeah. so if you go outside of it, you go a little bit on the outskirts, there's still investors that'll buy there you know, but you're not dealing with as much competition. So we've just kind of pivot, you know, when we move to different zip codes. Yeah. So in diversifying the fact that we're in multiple markets, so we have a lot of options. I've noticed the people that struggle the most were just like in one market and that's all they have and it's their mm. backyard and, you know, they don't know what to do now. And so they pivot in different ways. Like, you know, they start doing like residential real estate, um, like, you know, so, like being a realtor, you know, yeah. this is a good time to be a realtor, you know? Yeah. Um, so, okay. but, yeah. how do you build your buyers list? You know, go, you know, you starting out and then now, and how have you been able to refine that buyers list? Cause a lot of people that end up getting on that buyers list, maybe don't buy a deal for, you know, a couple of years. So how are you scrubbing that list as well? Oh, well, we definitely don't scrub it. Okay. We want bigger, the better, bigger, yeah, the better, I the bigger our buyers list gets the, the, easier we can move deals. So we okay. definitely want as many people as possible. Um, we have regular, a regular building our buyers list is a regular practice. We actually have somebody in house that that is her job. She's a virtual okay. assistant. She's Philippine based. Okay. So she's, you know, relatively inexpensive and she does a lot of different techniques to find buyers in the area. Um, a lot of it is just finding these people on Facebook. You know, okay. seeing, you know, because Facebook, it's so like, there's all these real estate investment clubs that are yeah. local. Yeah, a lot uh, of groups. So, a lot of groups. So she, you know, she scours the group. She looks and sees who's posting deals and then who's posting that they're interested. And we contact and say, you know, are you looking for deals? And would you like to be on our list? Okay. Um, so we do that. I mean, like every day it's part of her job. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and so even back in 2016, when you were solo doing this and just starting, were you able to build those lists pretty proficiently? No, it's harder when you're solo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you definitely need, I, I would say the best money you'll spend is a virtual assistant for $5 an hour. That'll do this for you a few hours a day. Until how long you're... did it, sorry, oh, I was just going to say, you know, follow up. How long did it take you to get to that place where you can hire someone and actually have that virtual assistant helping you out? especially because, you know, being that solopreneur. Yeah. You know, I stayed solo probably two years. Okay. I was doing all the things for two years. I think I got a bookkeeper, but yeah. like for the most part, I didn't really get much help. Yeah. And then I hired just like a local assistant, like someone to like work full time with me and just kind of be like my right hand person. And he still works with me for, to this day. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So, and he's now like, he manages everybody else. So yeah. he's grown with me. Um, and it's, it's little by little, you know, I, I didn't do it all at once. It was like one hire a year that would be new. Right. Like first it was like, you know, I had my right hand person and like, then we kind of defined his job role and sort of put him in a department. And then we found someone else to be in this department, you know? And, yeah. um, so it was little by little, 
Um, and I have a lot, I actually really try to utilize virtual employees as much as possible. Cause you know, it's expensive, especially in California to have a W2 employee yeah. here. So I try to go uh, virtual assistant route first if I can. If I can't, you know, then it I, I try to find somebody, you know, here local. But VAs gotcha. are very powerful if you get a good one. Yeah, for sure. Where do you usually find your VAs? Um, I found a lot of them through word of mouth. Actually, my whole oh, yeah? team right now was friends of friends of friends. So like I got a hold of one VA who then introduced me to a friend, then her sister started working with us. And then um another virtual assistant I got it was a Mexico guy from Mexico and he's he but he's he used to live in the United States so he knows the US so he does my sales calls. Oh really? Yeah he does all my acquisitions right now. Him and I, I have another local girl that does acquisitions actually lives in California and then um but I hired a couple of his friends. Oh, nice. they, all, they worked for uh, like, I don't know, one of these bigger house buying companies actually. Oh, really? Yeah. So he's, so he's like, well, I've got other like friends that worked for the same company. Would you like want to interview them? I was like, yeah, like I'll enter. I hired four of them in like at once. And then I was like to see who would work out. And one of them just did not work out. And then the other, um, you know, three of them did work out very well in different parts. Like somewhere I was like, this might not be the best fit for you, but let's move you here. Yeah. You know, so yeah. So it's kind of, I gotten really lucky with word of mouth with virtual mm. assistants, but I know you can find them on Upwork. Um, there's another yeah. site. I always forget the name. Fiverr. Um, Fiverr, not Fiverr. It's like a Philip, it's literally a Philippine based VA site. Oh, really? There's only Philippines. It's a job board site. So there's something like that. Um, it okay. can be hard to find a VA. It can be very yeah. hard. But when you find a good VA, you're like, okay, that was worth the work to find out. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. So what do you guys, you're using Podio and then what other uh, what other softwares are you guys using that that's helping out your business, especially today? Oh my gosh, I use so many softwares. I was just making a list for the first time ever of how many softwares we're enrolled in and it made me sick. Oh, no? <laughs> Yeah, because you started rolling in so many things and you forget. Yeah. You know? And, and then you're like, well, but do I need this? Well, I use it like once every two months. And then, you know, so gosh, we are in a lot. But I will say um, some of my favorite ones. I love Prop Stream. Okay. Um, Prop Stream is awesome. Um, actually, if you go on my website, I have a resource page. If you guys are into like looking at the things that I use, uh, my website's This Mom Flips. And if you click resources, there's a bunch of different links to take you to these um, sites. So one is PropStream I really like. Um, I love batchleads.io. I do all my skip tracing through them. And I also organize all my lists in their list stacker. Okay. Um, they also have the text messaging software, but we have already kind of covered that texting, you know, may or may not go away. Who knows? So yeah, um, yeah those are probably my top two that I use most frequently. Okay. And going going back to your list when you guys are building you know and actually building that list for contacts uh how often are you guys scrubbing it every morning are you guys you know when you're when you're having your cold callers call how often do you guys scrub it well scrubbing it for what specifically uh yeah just for for you know you call somebody and they're not interested or you know DNC in or something like that yeah Right. So, I mean, this is like a pretty heavy topic, um, but we definitely have an internal DNC, you know, list and we use the batch lead stacker tool to mark off people as DNC. So anytime we pull a campaign, those people will be eliminated. Um, okay. And then we put the campaign, you know, into the texting software or the cold calling software, knowing that those people are eliminated and we call through the campaign. Um, so, you know, and then within those campaigns, you can say like not interested or, you know, whatever, um, yeah. they have different selections. Um, so it's all kind of within those softwares. Got it. Got mm -hmm. it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, it's always, you know, 
Well, you have the DNC, right? And then it's always mm -hmm. one of those where, especially when you're when you're focused. I mean, you're doing something where it's a you know pretty big, you know, a really fine niche where mm -hmm. you're doing stuff wholesaling outside of you know the or outside of uh, California. But you know, when you're scrubbing those lists, you want to make sure you're you know as precise as possible and making sure that you know outside of the DNC, you know, that you're actually contacting people that are are you know ready and able doing you know to actually do a deal. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, before we get into the last questions, when you guys are focused on um, profits, what are you guys looking for when you're, is there a specific number when you're doing a wholesale deal? Um, I know it can be market specific, but is there a specific number that you guys are looking for when you're doing a deal? You know, it's pretty market specific. So rather than giving a, like an actual number, I, I would say giving you a percentage might make um, yeah. more sense. So from what I've noticed, because I've been mean, even with the st students I coach, you know, because I've got over like 250 students now. So oh, like okay. I've definitely like I've seen, you know, like trends. Yeah. And it just seems like the average wholesale fee should be about 10%. Okay. Of the sale price that you're selling it to the end buyer. Yeah. So if it's lower than that, you're probably in a saturated market. Okay. If it's higher, you're probably in a market that is not as saturated, which is nice. Yeah. So a sweet spot would be 10%. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, well, let's transition real quick. I had a couple, you know, final follow-up questions for you. Um, so, you know, you've done a lot of, you know, a lot of studying, a lot of education, you know, moving into doing virtual wholesaling. Mm -hmm. What's one book that you, you know, you've read that's really helped you out? I always recommend The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Oh, That's good. probably my first, like, because it's a really good mindset book. And I think mindset's very important. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. That one's really good. I love it. All right. So if you could pick one piece of software or online tool that you're using right now that you think is the mm -hmm. best out of, you know, that laundry list of ones that you said you had to go and you end up going through, yeah. what's the best one you're using right now? I really like PropStream because PropStream, you can comp, it's basically like having the MLS everywhere. So okay. I can use PropStream, um, you know, and I can literally like have sales. I can pull cash sales. I can pull comps. I can pull my marketing lists. Um, so I'm a big fan of PropStream. Um, I, that's something we're using every day. Got it. Okay. Okay, cool. And, and so you kind of mentioned it before, but where can people find out more about you? Well, I'm pretty active on all the social platforms. So um, I would say start with YouTube. I have a YouTube channel where I do a bunch of videos, um, all free education. Um, it's This Mom Flips, or you can search Lauren Hardy, This Mom Flips on YouTube. Um, this Mom Flips is my Instagram handle. And if you are interested in virtual real estate investing, um, the coaching program URL is virtualinvestingmastery.com. And it's with Wholesaling Inc. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for taking the time out today and chat with us and especially going over, you know, what you're doing, especially the unique ability of you doing it outside of, you know, the state that you're currently living in. We haven't had anybody on like yourself. Awesome. I'm happy to be here. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Bye.